welcome everyone again. And uh, tonight's main attraction is uh, Alfonso Gomez from Service Rocket, who is joining us today from Santiago de Chile in Chile, which is about the most exotic location we had on this webinar this year. Um, and he is going to tell us something about how to facilitate a seamless workflow between Salesforce and Jira. And you all know that Salesforce bought Slack this week for a truckload of money. Um, and never then in the current moment was it more important to know how to integrate with Salesforce. So we are very happy to have Alfonso and uh, his talk about their solutions, service rocket solutions for Salesforce integration. And with that, Alfonso, over to you. And I will just disappear and see you on the other side. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jorik. Uh, and yeah, that tool that you were mentioning sounds really, really interesting. I love that it is a startup. I'm probably going to be taking a look at it. Uh, but more to the point, uh, I'll be sharing my screen now to show you a little bit of what we will be seeing today. Uh, and yeah, the conversation uh, will be around how to facilitate seamless workflows between Salesforce and Jira. Uh, and a little bit on the high level and taking a step back, even from the title, um, you will have different functional teams in your company, right? And those functional teams will uh, live in different platforms in their day-to-day -day operation. Uh, to put simple examples, probably sales teams live inside Salesforce and of course support and developers will live in Jira. Uh, and when these teams collaborate on a project or a process or on a workflow, um, you lose context and many times uh, things will get um, a little bit convoluted in into those conversations. Uh, more often than not, uh, you won't have the full context or visibility of what's happening behind those uh, software, uh, and it will be not it will not be cost effective to have a license for each one of your users from Jira in Salesforce and from Salesforce uh, in Jira. So. The idea is that you use Salesforce to simplify customer relationship manager management, I'm sorry, and scale revenue, uh, and Jira to deliver and create the products that your customer loves. And as Jura was mentioning, these are two really juggernauts of software. Um, so Salesforce themselves say that they have 20% of the CRM market. Uh, in Jira, it will depend on how you measure it, right? If you're talking about um, uh, bug tracking, there probably are between 15 and, and 20%. And if we're talking about agile project management, uh, then it is almost 50%, right? Uh, and then again, we know that um, those two software powerhouses or stacks are really, really effective and what they do. Uh, the problem is, of course, when you try to use them together. Um, and I want to stop here. Uh, things usually go wrong uh, in the processes that you have between the platforms. Uh, if we jump into the specifics of it, you probably have a sales sim or a customer success sim that maybe they were talking with a customer and the customer uh, share with them a bug or maybe a feature request and your sales agent who lives in Salesforce will have to communicate back to the correct team that information and hopefully he does that uh, effectively and concisely right uh, there's two scenarios at this point at least at this stage of the story uh, they will have access to Jura or not if they don't um, in the past, they would just maybe have a hallway conversation. Of course, most of us are working from home, but the logic is the same, right? They'll send a, a Slack chat, maybe a workplace or a Teams, Microsoft Teams chat, or any other software that you're using to communicate internally. Uh, maybe you have an email to automatically create a Jira issue and they'll send that. Or maybe you have the customer facing portal of Jira and the sales agent will create a ticket uh, for the customer, right? But that's the only only the start of the story. Uh, or maybe they have access to Jira, right? So they'll get to Jira. Maybe they are confused about the projects. Uh, they don't know what uh, issue should they uh, create. Maybe you have custom issues. Maybe you have a really customized uh, Jira infrastructure. Uh, and even 
if that user is savvy, not only in Salesforce, but in Jira, you still have to context switch, right? I have to log into Jira. I have to copy and paste information from one side to the other. Uh, and that is going to take time. And many times I'm going to make mistakes, right? Uh, maybe I copy half of the message. Uh, maybe I confuse the tickets and I created it in another project. And then it's a job of the support or development team to try to find out where that ticket is coming from and what the context is for that. That company right because if I think on the other side I just saw a new ticket um, a sales agent created I only have part of the picture because it's only the reason why they are creating it I don't know how many um, how much revenue does the customer generate a year maybe I don't know um, how many uh, users do they have from my platform uh, and so on and so forth uh, because that is information that probably won't live in Jira um, and you'll have many other scenarios in which the lack of communication, the effective communication will cause problems. So manual and repetitive data entry, uh, poor visibility, context switching, as I mentioned before. Uh, and at the end of the day, you won't have one source of truth, right? Uh, you won't know how many tickets that company raised. And if you know from one side, you will know uh, maybe what products do they have. Uh, and you'll have to basically get the information from both of the platforms and mix them together. Uh, and there are many reasons why you should close that gap, all of those problems and mistakes that I just mentioned. But also it's not only about the problems, it's about the opportunities that those errors uh, really entail, right? Uh, so you will be removing barriers to customer satisfaction, right? Uh, it's a matter, it could be as simple as the SLA. Maybe if I create manually ticket, uh, I miss the update on my email and we all know how cramped our emails can get with all of the updates for many, many platforms. Uh, we don't really, we're not really sure what's going on. And many times we miss those updates. But if I get the notification in my ecosystem, so if I create a case in Salesforce and I get a notification from that case, when someone makes an update in Jura, about that same issue, then that's effective, right? I know right away that I have to answer back to the customer that reported that issue. Maybe at the moment that the customer reports that issue, I want to look in Jira and see if someone else has reported it in the past. It's not necessarily uh, something that I have to go ahead and create a new ticket. Maybe that has been reported before. Maybe it's not a bug, it's a feature. Uh, maybe it's a known, uh, there's a known workaround for it and I can access that information right away if I can see from Salesforce what's happening in Jura. So you'll provide teams with comprehensive real-time information about the status of the tasks that are being bugs, uh, feature requests, uh, or anything else that's living in the other platform right where I need it. So maybe at an account level, maybe at a case level, maybe I'm leveraging custom objects on the Salesforce side, uh, and I'll be able to access that information as I see fit. Um, so the idea is to integrate the CRM, all the information that you need to the get work done power of Jira, right? Where you execute, where you solve those issues. Um, and you align the seams in a single source of truth, which is what I was mentioning before, right? Uh, by streaming uh, an automatic cross-functional workflow. Uh, and the idea is that you can seamlessly map records from one side to the other, right? No matter the context, uh, might be a bug report, it might be a feature request. Maybe we start talking about other types of cases, right? It's not necessarily about sales teams and support teams or customer advocates and developers. Uh, maybe I'm closing an opportunity on the Salesforce side and I need for my legal team to sign and send the contract to the customer that I just closed the contract with. Um, in our case, and I'll talk about Service Rocket for a second, uh, we have to create cases with the legal team whenever we close an SOW with a customer. Uh, we can do that directly from Salesforce, right? I close the opportunity and automatically I get a ticket created for that particular engagement. Uh, it might be marketing collateral 
maybe the sales team is working on a new deal. They want to share something personalized with their customer. Uh, let's say a one pager or maybe a presentation with particular information about the product. Then again, many marketing teams uh, live in Jira and work in Jira to execute and deliver what they have to do. So that sales agent can create a case associated to an account or even directly from the account, they can create an issue, an issue task or a subtask inside a project to request that relevant collateral. Uh, and you'll have many, many cases and many scenarios where different functional teams uh, that are living on one side need help from the other side and they need to communicate effectively. Uh, so in the end, that means that the sale team and going back to that main case can capture CRM data uh, and close business without delays. So we were talking about that SOW. Whenever I close the opportunity, it's already on the legal team hand and they can send it right away to the customer and I get that signature in a day without mistakes and we know that that particular process of SOWs and contracts is a particularly delicate one. So mistakes uh, is something that we don't want to commit. We don't want to commit them in any case scenario, but that's a particular uh, hard mistake to, to commit. And, and the tech team can manage project tasks and bugs and issues that come from Salesforce without errors, without complexity and communicate effectively back and forth. So basically, in the end, you'll reduce the need for manual data entry and human intervention is not only the copy and pasting from one side to the other, uh, is basically the whole process of it. I don't long, I no longer have to think if I have to create this on Jira or not. Maybe I have a pick list and if I select a scale to Jira, that creates it automatically. And I don't have to think about all the fields that will live inside my Salesforce object that will go to the Jira issue and back, right? All of that will be catered automatically. Uh, you can deliver the resources that you need when you need them. So many of our customers use uh, the connector for in a specific case, which is basically allocating time for projects. Uh, we talked about opportunities uh, and how when you close that opportunities, you can send something to legal, but also you can send it to the product, I'm uh, sorry, project manager. You can tell me, hey, I sold all of these product lines that would entail X amount of hours. Please allocate those hours while we sale, while we close the sale and while we get the signature for the contract. And of course, you will be minimizing friction and improving customer experience. I know right away when that product feature gets into the backlog. I know right away when the product feature gets included into the product. And I know right away when that problem that I just, just reported is solved or if it's already solved and there's a workaround. Um, but yeah, jumping into maybe a little bit more uh, about how the product looks. And I usually don't like to do a product reel, uh, but this is an interesting one. Uh, you'll be able to map fields, right? Many fields don't relate to each other uh, between Salesforce and Jira. Uh, summary uh, and subject description and description, that's a, a name convention, but maybe priority will be different or maybe you want to push it to one side and not the other. Uh, we know that the status of a Jira case is a system field, a read only field, so that we only get pushed from Jira to Salesforce. And that's interesting, right? If I attach a case or an object to a Jira issue, whenever I close the issue, I want the case closed. So my customer on the customer side, on the sales side, gets a notification, hey, this is done. I no longer need to inform the sales team that this is already done because the records themselves are in sync. So whenever the dev department maybe asks a question to the customer through the Jira comments and then that gets sent to the Salesforce comments, I no longer need to be the middleman for that process. Uh, you'll also be able to automate. We talked a lot about automating. So I close the opportunity, I create the legal ticket, I close the opportunity, I send a notification to the project manager. Uh, maybe I close the case uh, and I close or I send a notification to the Jira side uh, and so on and so forth. Many business cases will have different scenarios, but the idea is to be able to adapt to those scenarios. Um, that's why actually uh, we provide uh, Salesforce triggers and Jira pass functions. 
so you can build your own case. Uh, you'll have your workflow in Jira. You can put the um, uh, pass function in there and automate the process. You can have a trigger on the Salesforce side that it, it is sent whenever you see fit. Maybe it's a field that you want to fulfill. Maybe it's a certain uh, amount of customer. Uh, maybe from a certain revenue, you only want to create a ticket. You can create those rules and those rules will adapt to your business. Um, and yeah, you'll have a bi-directional synchronization. Basically, if I update something on Salesforce, we'll get pushed to Jira and the other way around. And this is only if you want, you can have manual push or pull. In many cases, information is really sensitive. So I might want to only be able to send information from one side to the other, but not uh, from Jira to Salesforce, right? And you'll select the fields that you want to map, you'll select the records that you want to map, you'll decide all of those rules that will adapt to your business and provide the experience that you're looking for. Um, and yeah, no more context switching, right? You'll be able to access the information that you need from Jira in Salesforce. So this is a quick view of how that will look like. You have, this is a, a Jira, I'm sorry, a Salesforce case. You have three different Jira records associated to it. You have Jira comments coming directly to Salesforce and you can even maintain a conversation, a real time conversation between the platforms and everything will get recorded. You don't even have to go to Slack. You don't have to go to uh, Workplace Chat. You don't have to go to Microsoft Teams because you can do everything in your own ecosystem, which might be Jira or Salesforce, depending on the context. Uh, and yeah, the idea is to enable every case scenario with automation, with many too many associations. Uh, maybe I have a, an account with multiple cases, as we just saw. That's possible. And the idea is to have the full view of what's happening in there. Uh, you'll have comments as we saw, and of course, no matter if you're a classic um, or lining, you'll be able to access the potential of the tool. Um, and in the end, the conclusion is that basically sales can focus on selling, tech can solve problems, marketing can support the pipeline leads and support can access account information, right? And they can focus on what their job is and not how to communicate to other teams or how to jump between the platforms and solve those kind of issues. Uh, in the end, you're improving not only your relationship to customer, your ability to deliver, but the quality of life of the people working inside those platforms, right? Um, and finally, um, not less important, you can consolidate your licenses. We know that Salesforce licenses are not cheap. Uh, and of course, when you add Jira licenses plus all of the applications that you might have, that's also relevant. So you can keep accessing the information that you need from the other platform, uh, but you don't have uh, a user for it. And by consequence, you don't pay for it, right? So that's an additional um, feature or additional benefit of integrating those platforms. You actually end up saving money. Um, and yeah. As I started with the same idea, I want to close with this idea, which is enhanced customer acquisition, retention strategy, and the customer experience. They are who's driving your revenue, right? And you want to provide the better experience for them and to understand them as better as possible. Uh, and in the end, the reporting capabilities that you will get with the one source of truth will enable you not only in today-to-day -to -day operation, but also in the planning to deliver a better experience con with them and, and help them exceed expectations, right? Um, I wanted to jump into the more specific uh, case of uh, one of our customers, but I think uh, I took a little bit more time than I wanted over the presentation. Uh, but many of our customers are saving a lot of time with the connector, um, almost a uh, hundred hours uh, a, a week, uh, depending on the size of the company, right? But they are no longer doing manual work at all. And that's really, really interesting. Uh, and yeah, also just a small product reel, we do offer a 30 day uh, trial. Uh, you can extend that if you're in server or data center, uh, even in cloud, uh, this trial offers support so if you want to try something, just engage with us uh, and we'll help you with that. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, a little bit about the connector, how it works, and more importantly, why it's relevant to connect those two platforms and remove those silos that you have created uh, with good intentions, right? But that 
in the end uh, end up generating these uh, issues that we talked about, like communication, uh, data entry, mistakes, um, chasing around people, right? Have you had the chance to take a look at this case that I created? You'll know that right away. You no longer have to chase people around. Um, so yeah, I did want it to jump into a quick overview of the connector and how it works. Um, so as you can see, uh, and let me know if you can see, uh, this is a standard case scenario. This is a fresh instance of Salesforce. And you might notice a couple of things that are interesting. So on one side, you'll have a lining component. And then again, this is compatible with classic. We do provide, um, uh, Lighting Force components uh, for it also, uh, but you can see these two buttons, uh, which will enable you to create and associate records in Jira. You'll also notice that I have Jira comments right here, and that I have a filter for it. So many times you don't have to, you don't want to have all the chatter going on the back end of Jira pushing to Salesforce, but maybe you do want to communicate from time to time to the sales agent, right? Uh, in that case, you will push hashtag Salesforce and that comment will get pushed to the Salesforce platform and you can activate that or not. You can choose to send comments or not. It's all pretty configurable, but I'll go ahead and say, okay, maybe I just uh, f created this case. I know I have to escalate that, uh, escalate this case to the support team. So what I can do is to create something, uh, to create a Jira issue that I have defining which projects and what issue types I want to be able to create. Uh, and even before that, I might want to take a look if this issue that I'm creating already exists. And this is the usual scenario for any test instance. If I click test, you'll see many, many records on the Jira side. So maybe I say, okay, this is the the issue that I want to associate to this particular case. But let's pretend in this scenario, I didn't found what I was looking for. So I'll go ahead and create an issue. Uh, I'll select a project, I'll select an issue type, uh, and then I have two options. I can create it right away uh, based on the configurations that I've done on the backend, or I can review it. And this will actually pull the layout from the issue itself so that I can actually select priority just like I would do on the Jira side. Uh, I can select the components, fixed versions, all of those fields that you are already familiar if you live inside the Jira platform. And as you can see, the summary and the description have already been pre-populated. And actually, if I don't touch anything in there and just create it, um, you'll see, oh, there we go, a summary. Uh, we'll just add test. The description is already there and we can go ahead and create that. The platform will inform me that a Jira issue has been created. I'll see the issue right away and I can actually click it if I have access to Jira, of course, and I'll go to the other platform. And as you can see, I just created an issue from Salesforce. And then again, you could have selected the project, the issue type and whatever you want to create. Uh, what's interesting about this is that if I leave a comment, uh, I can go ahead um, and write it right here and see those comments on the Salesforce side. Um, so then again, you can see the case right there and the functionality that you'll get on the Jira side will be exactly the same one as you get on the Salesforce side. So as you can see, I can create a Salesforce object or I can associate a Salesforce object. So it is the same thing on the Salesforce side. Um, so I'm going to update that and you won't see that comment because I just remember that I have my filter in place, right? Uh, so if I go ahead and write a new comment and use the hashtag this time, we can go back to Salesforce and we'll see the comment that I just made. We have compatibility for chatter and also for these components. So depending on your business case, you might want to use one or the other. Uh, one is read only. The other one you can interact with. So you can create triggers or flows uh, based on that on the Salesforce side. Uh, and then again, maybe I want to edit the description. 
and save it. Uh, the customer just provided additional information that we, I want to send to the Jira side. And if we go to the Jira side, you'll see that edit. Uh, and then again, maybe I can request additional information. Maybe the sales agent adds it to the description and we start building a conversation between the platforms. At the end of the day, I'll have access to everything I need on Salesforce. And even if I don't ha have access to Jira, I can see everything that I want to see and I can engage with my customer effectively and solve the issue effectively. Um, then again, if they close the ticket, the case will get closed and that will notify the customer right away. So I won't even need to create an email or engage with the customer to basically inform him that the issue or the problem that he just uh, or that he reported is solved. Uh, and like this, you can have many, many cases. I know this is extremely simple, but I want to showcase uh, how you can build something from scratch. Uh, and then you can go and build really complex scenarios like the ones we talked about opportunities, the ones we talked about uh, any other object in Salesforce or any other issue type in Jura. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is share a little bit about the configuration. Um, and it is extremely simple and extremely straightforward. Um, so you can create bindings for the projects that you want. So only projects that you deem relevant for this interaction will be part of it. Um, and then again, inside each project, you can have uh, different mappings. So for example, you can say, okay, I want to be able to create tasks, um, subtasks and bugs from cases, uh, but only tasks from accounts and inside each one of these you'll have the mappings so you'll say huh these are the fields that i want to map uh, and this is the direction that i want to map the fields uh, and then again we are compatible with custom fields and standard fields same thing for objects and issue types um, but yeah that's a little bit how the connector works i don't want to transform this into a full-on product demo uh, but i do want to see uh, if you have any questions or any ideas or any scenarios that you'd like to take a closer look at uh, or maybe share a context or a business case that you've seen that you'd like to resolve. Um, but yeah, that's what I got up until this point at least. Thank you very much. That was very interesting and so many questions. Um, and while, Hubert, if you don't have a question, while I transform everybody to the panel, Yes, of course, okay. I have a question. So uh, f uh, that's the always question that I start with to any add-on that you can install to Jira Cloud. Can I select to which project it will be visible, the section of the add-on? Because really often I, I hear from my customers that after installation of the new add-on, you have a new section and you have 10 add-ons, 10 sections, and they are really angry or like displeased, let's say like that, right? So you can restrict that configuration to just certain selected project. That is an excellent question because we get that a lot from customer. Uh, we are working on it at this point. So as of today, you'll see the section that basically on the right side at the bottom, you'll get a section that's mm -hmm. called Salesforce. Yes, yes. So as of today, everyone will see that, but we're working to make it a possibility to hide it and show it depending on who is using it or depending on the business case uh, permission wise. Uh, but it's definitely something that we got in order either. Really good question there. Perfect, perfect, great. And that configuration, I understand it's also for Jira data center also for cloud, right? Yes. So we are compatible with cloud server, uh, as long as that lasts and mm -hmm. data center. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, my first question, um, how, how would that, uh, do you have any plans, any ideas how that will work with Jira service management, or how that will integrate with Jira service management? That's a really good question also. So we are working to make it uh, a seamless compatibility, to make it as simple as for customers when they change uh, to the new product. Uh, it is 
a change in branding, but also in functionality, right? Uh, and we have that as one of our main priorities. So if you have the product installed, uh, it should be in the way that we're planning it seamless. Uh, when you make the change, it's like when you do a migration from server to data center, um, if the product is compatible with both of them, is mostly a, a new configuration and that's it. Everything that you had before is going to be working as it usually does, as long as you make that change as part of your change process. Um, but yeah, we will be prepared for that change. Oh, perfect. Um, and I have another question. Um... This is a European question. Um, how about GDPR compliance? So um, all the data, most of the data in the CRM is customer related, is personal information. So you have to kind of safeguard that personal information is not exchanged across system boundaries uh, and that data is deleted if it has to be deleted. So how does that work? That is also a really good question. So we build this uh, connector with privacy as one of our main concerns. So for server and data center, there is no middleman. So the information is flowing directly from your Jira instance to Salesforce. That's actually, if you have a firewall, you have to whitelist only Salesforce uh, as the um, handler of the information from one side to the other. There's no uh, additional service that you have to whitelist in case that you have a firewall. If you don't have it, there's still obviously no middleman, so we don't touch any of the information. For cloud, we do need a service that will live in the middle of the relationship, and the only information that it will manage, but not write, it will be the Salesforce cases, I'm sorry, not cases, object IDs. Um, so we're not touching any customer information, any identifiable information. Um, the ones that are more familiar with Salesforce will know that the ID in Salesforce is basically created when you create the record. Um, and it's only uh, cases, I'm sorry, numbers and, and, and letters on it. Um, but yeah, we do have a security statement uh, that I can definitely send to you guys to add it to the description for the webinar uh, or any of the participants that might be interested. Uh, okay, I have another question. So how about uh, custom fields that are coming from add-ins? Like, let's say, maybe not portfolio, but there are like structure or ALM or other. Do, do you have plans to do some cooperation between the um, partners or like developers of others? Because I can see now there's a lot of partnership that, for example, like in Tempo, you can use that ALM stuff. And also ALM was acquired by the Atlassian, so it will be included probably in the next Jira releases, right? That insight, yes. I mean. That's a good point, and I'm actually glad you brought Tempo because that's one of the questions that we get asked most about. Um, and we are exploring in that particular scenario how we can integrate more effectively. We heard that they were bringing a couple of things inside this even more in depth about the Atlassian ecosystem and the Jira integration itself. Um, so at a high level, anything that's part of the issue itself as a field, you'll be able to push. Many times if it is a component, it's not really part of the issue itself, right? So depending on how that relationship gets solved, uh, we'll see if we can handle it or if we have to go directly to them uh, to try to create something. Uh, but yeah, it happens with Tempo. It happens with a lot of uh, mainstream, we could call them other add-ons. Uh, and, and yeah, in general terms, as lo and it happens a lot with Salesforce, right? In general terms, as long as the information is part of the record itself, the object on the Salesforce side or the issue in the Jira side, then we can seed and we can uh, create relationships between them. Uh, there are workarounds, of course, um, in which you can pick something up, maybe with automation, or maybe with a script runner, uh, if that's not something that it's part of the issue itself. Um, but yeah, that's the main rule uh, in this case. If it's part of the issue as a field, then yes. Um, same thing on the object side in Salesforce. Perfect. Okay. Great. Great to hear. Okay. Um... If I create a platform spanning workflow, it's always like Salesforce triggers a workflow in Jira and then gets a result back. Or can I have a, can I define a workflow that's really on both sides of Salesforce and Jira? 
I think uh, the answer is two part. So in one example, you'll have uh, the post functions, right? So you can leverage those post functions whenever you see fit inside your workflow. But that being said, maybe inside your workflow, you have a rule, right? Uh, whenever this happens with my particular issue, um, I want to take certain action. Now, you can push information from Salesforce to the Jira issue, right? So if something happens on the Salesforce side that updates the Jira issue, then you can take an action with the workflow. That's part of the solution that I think I'm trying to answer your question. On the other side, we have uh, Salesforce triggers. So maybe there's something only happening in Salesforce. Uh, let's say when an account certain reaches certain threshold in a particular field, let's call it Roy, for example, then create a ticket in some project with certain characteristics. Uh, you can create those Salesforce um, workflows uh, and then generate an automation, right? So you can create them from both sides. And since the information will be flowing from one side to the other, uh, then the integration can be both ways. I don't know if I make myself clear though. Yeah. So and I can also set a condition in Salesforce, for example, uh, let's say if uh, Jira issue not resolved, then do nothing or whatever. Uh, exactly. Some, something like that. So. Exactly, because the Jira issue, I can um, map the status of it with the status of the case. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I say, well, if the case is not resolved, then take certain action. Uh, and then as soon as the case is closed, that will get passed through. I'm sorry, as soon as the issue is solved, that will get passed through the case and then we'll, it will be closed. And then it can take another action, right? Okay. So, and I can also use that for escalation. So if I do not hear from Jira for two weeks, escalate uh, exactly. somewhere you, or whatever. You can change the priority, for example, in Salesforce mm. and push that to Jira. Maybe you can automate leaving a comment um, in oh. Salesforce mm. and that will get passed to Jira uh, and so on and so forth. So you can take different actions depending on the business case, but there are multiple ways of communicating back uh, and to automate in something. Are there limits? Could I change the SNE in Jira? Anything, uh, that's a good question. So anything, you'll have a, an integrator user. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that that integration, integration user can do, the integration itself will be able to accomplish. So for example, just to put it uh, in an extreme case, if uh, my integration user doesn't have the ability to edit fields, then the integration won't work, right? Mm -hmm. Because I cannot edit anything. Um, so yeah, if that user somehow were able to edit it, then yes. But there are many things that are at a database level that we know you can not edit in Jira. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, and those, the connector will not be able to, to intervene. But if I'm crazy enough, I could give that integration user administration permissions and then I could basically change everything if I wanted to. In theory, they, they still have to be fields inside the Jira. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, but, but, mm. but yeah, um, in, okay. th in theory, yeah. In theory, I could change SNEs and reporters and whatnot, everything. So mm -hmm. everything that I could. Okay, yeah. um, that's interesting. So another question from my side then. So there is a trendy topic about now migration from server to cloud. How does it work with your add-on if some of the customers are using them already for integration? That's an additional good question. So we have many scenarios because we actually have an older version of our connector. So depending on the migration scenario, you'll need different approaches. So for example, we know that server to data center is seamless. Um, if you're migrating from the older version from server to cloud, uh, we have a tool. Uh, in other cases, we have a script. Uh, what you can do is download all the information that you have of associations. So put it in simple terms, you have this Jira issue key, which corresponds to these Salesforce IDs. You download that and leveraging the script that we have, you can use it as a source for it and then create the interaction that you need and recreate all of the associations that you originally had. 
Um, so depending on the case, it will be a little bit more complex or a little bit more seamless, but we do have migration paths for all the combinations. So we have an older version that is compatible with server and data center and the newer version, which is compatible with all um, hostings. So do you think that if one of our users would like to migrate it, they can do that by themselves or better to ask your support for help? So the question is if the documentation is straightforward, how to do that, or it's more complicated? Uh, I would say they will need our help to do so if they are migrating particularly from the new connector server to cloud based on how the management of the application is done at a um, core level, how the architecture of the application is. That being said, we are working on enabling through a tool, a tool that they can, the customer can manage uh, and defining the documentation for each step for each migration case. Thank you very much, Alfonso. That was most interesting. And I guess um, uh, we have a community post uh, in our community group. And if you have any other questions or want to ask anything else, I guess that's the place to start. Uh, and I will forward the questions to Alfonso. Um, if I may. So that's it. That would absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I'll so be taking a, a closer look at the post also. So that's good. Yeah. So, um, and with that, thank you again. Um, have a nice afternoon. Um, and hope to see you next week during our Christmas party, hopefully. So see you around. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys, for having me. It's been <laughs> super fun. And I'm really glad to, to participate in this kind of um, interactions. It's, it's definitely fun for us as a company and for myself, as you can gladly. And of course, you are always welcome to have another presentation when you release like nice features and so on, right? Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I think you're having um, a server related uh, event somewhere along the line. Um, I know we are talking about participating in that and any other case that you want to come with us. Absolutely. And uh, whenever S Salesforce decides what to do with Slack, that will be, I guess, okay. a topic topic for a presentation. So if if Slack becomes integrated into Salesforce, what that will look like, I guess that will be interesting for you as well and for your integration. Because, Absolutely. Because it's... then you have both sides, Jira Slack integration and Salesforce Slack integration. The story never ends. So with that, happy holidays and uh, see you again next year, hopefully. And hopefully very soon somewhere in the real world after all this lockdown. So until then, stay safe, have a nice afternoon and see you around. Bye-bye.